There's going to be two versions of this video. One of them I deliberately tried to be as much of a jerk as possible, and this one not. Which one is my real attitude? Obviously I'm on a not list, the one where I'm being a complete jerk. And which one of them is more effective on YouTube? See also what YouTube makes money off of. Just asking if FEMA 911 false alarm calls equal a distraction, therefore collusion, therefore the false lone wolf narrative. If FEMA et al. have determined the call to be an inter intentional distraction, then the distraction would imply collusion. Collusion negates a lone wolf narrative. See where this is leading? Why not label the calls as false alarms, etc.? Just asking. I'm gonna. This is gonna be a short version of the video I just did. I wanted to make it a full 15 minute long video. Uh, you get to decide which one's my attitude. Which one am I play acting, and which one am I not? Or am I just seeing both sides, or playing devil's advocate? So here we go. I'm gonna do this in reverse order because. This is something you learn when you're dismantling paragraphs, sentences, equations. Start at the ass end of the story. Why not label the calls as false alarms instead of being an intentional distraction? It was labeled distraction call. Me, Mr. Burgundy, and everybody else noticed that's a dumb damn thing to label it. Is that really a FEMA report? Can enough monkeys get together to write Shakespeare? Dear FEMA, <clears throat> Unless you're deliberately trolling the conspiracy theorists, stop letting idiots, or worse, creative writers, touch anything you're going to put out. Run it by a perfect... Just go hire a conspiracy theorist to go through and proofread your BS. The reason you get negative props is because you hire people who are stupid to write or type things. Stop that. Raise your standards and lower the amount of annoyance and noise on the net. So anyway, here we go. I'll just do the rest of this. If the FEMA page calls a phone call a distraction, why? Dismantling it here. Because it ended up being a distraction because no one's acknowledging that whoever made the phone calls unintentionally or intentionally distracted emergency services to something that was a non-issue. In case anybody's curious about it, some guy got taken into custody because of an accusation that this old man holding a pipe was somehow a threat because he did something somebody didn't understand and one of the people yelling loudly in the video claimed to be an off-duty cop and kept talking about kicking his ass. If you're that emotionally connected to something where there's literally no sign of a gun, no sign of aggression, no sign of Jack, he was walking his damn dog at the time apparently, if you're going to go there, you're fired. So this is the thing that everybody complains about police doing. Okay? Next they shouldn't have labeled it a distraction call. I agree. But next, if it was a distraction, an intentional distraction, who was being intentionally distracting? A person claiming to find a second shooter. That's who was making a distraction. Yes, someone called in saying, essentially, I found a possible second shooter. There may be more than one shooter in town. People panic under these conditions. Okay, but if FEMA's calling that an intentional distraction, because that's what you're calling it, would that imply collusion? It would imply the person making the complaint falsely is attempting to prove there's an extra shooter. Yeah, maybe collusion, but the only group that would be colluding would be Alex Jonestown. Or maybe the, the Russians. Next. A collusion negates a lone wolf narrative. No, no it doesn't, because the collusion you're accusing somebody of is the person calling 911. Not that they found a, uh, a second shooter. It's a distraction call because it's not a second shooter. If your reality base is that there cannot possibly be one shooter and one shooter only, then you have a bias you need to acknowledge. We understand as a population that one person can get a hold of a large number of guns and now we all understand that ha having a high capacity magazine it doesn't make much of a difference. It really doesn't. You can take 20, 
five round magazines and swap them out for one 100 round magazine, it will be slower if you do multiple magazines. I'm doing an extreme case here. But you'll still be able to shoot the same number of bullets because it's the same number of damn bullets. But where it makes a difference so you don't have to mess with it is if you're firing fast enough that literally changing out a magazine really does slow up your shooting. That only really is a problem if you can pull the trigger really, really fast. People have shown, and this is the funny thing the NRA did, a lots of NRA people have accidentally shown that unless you do use a bump stock or a Gatling gun trigger, Gat trigger, or trick trigger, you can't really take advantage of a 100 round magazine except for one reason. So you don't have to unplug the damn thing and change it out, otherwise it's not going to do anything to your ability to shoot. That's the thing that everybody noticed. If you combine the two, high cyclic rate by changing the gun into a machine gun, just shut up. It's a bump stock, I know, whatever. It made it a machine gun. Shut up. Grow a goddamn set of brains here. Grow a brain, morans. When you combine it with a high capacity magazine, at, at least at this point, the reason I'm saying high capacity and actually using it like it's a real term when it's not, what is the actual capacity of a belt-fed machine gun. What's the actual number of bullets in a belt-fed machine gun? I have videos up. You might want to look up the exact number of bullets on average. On average? Exact? You might want to look that up. I'll put an answer below in the video. Anyway, the person says, collusion negates a lone wolf narrative. Only if you decide that someone acknowledging that a phone call was probably a false alarm Somebody dials 911 because they're scared, therefore any lone wolf occurrence must be collusion. And then you say, see where this is leading? Uh, yeah, I see where it's leading in your mind. Now, this is a person who's been nice on my channel and commenting. I deliberately made a jackass video. Jackass the show. Play acting. But it's the same points I'm doing here. I don't have to sugarcoat anything here. The gun rights advocates out there have all realized, and this is what they don't talk about, if you have a high capacity magazine, that's the vague term for anything larger than what people think you should have for some blasted reason, it doesn't make a real difference. It does if you can fire the gun at a sustained rate that sounds almost exactly like a machine gun. Obviously it's not a machine gun. Anybody out there who heard Stephen Paddock firing and thinking that's a machine gun, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Please shut up. But. The libtards had a point here. Yeah, a high capacity magazine above 50 rounds. It becomes an issue if you can do a sustained rate of fire that's high enough and changing out the magazine would get in the way of it. So how do we fix it? Do we make it to where guns cannot be fired quickly per shot? Do we make it to where if you exceed a certain rate it jams? Would anybody buy a gun like that that technically is designed to jam under some conditions at all? Do you know what happens if you stovepipe or worse? Let's talk about hang fires for a few seconds. Let's not. The point I'm making here is we can't legislate away how creative a person can be. I'm sorry, a DC motor w with a little uh, uh, eccentric round mo It's really easy to convert a gun over to a machine gun if you know how to do it, and I'm not going to explain it. It's too damn easy. Now, I've covered the same points I did in the other video. It's longer, almost exactly double. Um, I'm talking about the same comment here, which I think is someone straining credulity to the point that they're snapping reality. Next, the best part of this is why not label the call a false alarm when that's what it is? My opinion is somebody at FEMA is constantly looking for ways to troll the public and actually reading their very boring PDFs. I'm not kidding. I'm starting to think that. Because have you ever noticed that if you read these FEMA documents people bring up, there's only one thing you can quote mine, and it makes everyone look irrational and stupid at the same time, amazingly enough. Same points I'm making in the other video. This will be a shorter version. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.